Hi, Dale coming to you from my garage again. And we as a family, we're not really the eat at the dining room table type of family. We typically pull up a TV tray, watch TV and eat on the couch. I know it's not the most family oriented, but it's how we are. With everybody back in the house, we don't have enough of these TV trays, so I'm gonna make one in this video. But mine's gonna be a little different. I've never seen one made this way before. So honestly, I have no clue if it's gonna work, but success, fail, or anywhere in between, I'm gonna show it. There really could be a reason why it's never been done before. It could be because it just won't work, but we're gonna see. Come on, let's go. Like so many of us now these days, I am sheltering in place as much as I can, going out as little as possible, so I am raiding my scrap bin for this project. So other than some hardware that I have on order, I am doing everything from scrap and the hardware piece should be coming in tomorrow. So I think I can get going with just these scraps, which frankly probably would have ended up in the burn pit. Since I really don't have any clue if this is going to work or not, not only am I raiding my scrap pile, I'm using a few different types of wood as well. If this turns out, I'll come back and make another one using nicer and better complementing wood. I start by cutting all the pieces to size by cross cutting and ripping all the scrap. The tabletop is going to be about 16 inches by 24 inches and it's going to stand about 27 inches high. While most of this is going to be made from 3 quarter inch stock, I'm going to try to use half inch plywood for the upright lathe. I'm thinking that this tray may end up being pretty heavy so I want to lighten it up a bit. The upright will have braces, so I think it'll be strong enough. We'll see about that. These two pieces will be the support to the single upright that will be holding the tray top. I wanted to give them a bit of style, so I'm going to round them off. I use my jigsaw to get the shape close and then finish it off with the belt sander. These two supports are where the strength is going to come. Since I already have the belt sander out, I use it to round off the corners of the tray top. Not only are the rounded corners a nicer look, they're a nicer feel as well. And hopefully, they'll help reduce people bumping into it, as well as clothes catching on the corner. For the bottom, I'm using some of my scrap poplar, and I'll be joining with dowels. I want the bottom to be pretty sturdy, so I'm going to use a lot of dowels. I have an extremely difficult time getting the dowels back out, and often I'll end up breaking the dowel off in the hole. Please let me know down in the comments any tips or tricks on being able to disassemble after dry fitting. Also, if any of you are going to mention using the Festool Domino, that is just simply out of my price range as I don't sell my creations. But if any of you would like to donate one, I would be very glad to be its forever home. I just want to give a quick tip for when you're using a doweling jig or a pocket jig or any jig where you put a stop collar on your drill bit. Oftentimes you'll get pieces jammed up in between the bit and the collar. This can stop you from getting the full depth of your hole that you need so make sure that you check it often and clean it out. So, remember a long time ago when I said I wanted to use a half inch piece of plywood so that I could lighten it up a bit? I said that I thought it would be plenty strong enough with the braces on it. Well, I was wrong. I'm now recutting the upright out of a scrap piece of three quarter inch plywood. The upright will have bracing, but I'm using dowels to attach the bottom to the upright. I make sure to use several dowels as I need this to be a pretty strong joint. I make sure that I do not place any holes on top of any dowels used to joint the bottom piece. This Jessam doweling jig has this cool referencing pin for making a row of dowels across a larger area. I simply clamp the jig down and make my first set of holes. Then. I move the jig over and place the first drill guide into the last hole using the 
referencing pin. Using that as a reference, I can now continue to drill my dowel holes across the entire board. The only thing that I need to do is make sure that I start my holes on the upright piece starting from the same side as a reference and use the same drill guides for my holes so that all of the holes will line up perfectly from the upright to the matching holes on the bottom. There is going to be a lot of stress on the joint connecting the upright to the base. Because of that, I'm going to be adding a brace on the back of the upright on both the left and right sides. I use dowels for that joint as well using the same technique as I just did to get the dowel holes across a long board I drilled dowel holes on both braces just like before I take care to make sure that I write down exactly which drill hole guides I'm using so that I can transfer the matching holes to the back of the upright by the way I'm using all 3 8 inch dowels so far I'm going to take this time to round over the top piece. I'm using my new Rockler router table that came as a kit with the Triton router. No sponsorship or freebies here. I bought all of this with my own money and I'll have a video out on it soon. This will make it much more comfortable on our arms when we're using this tray. Now for my super secret, I've never seen it done before, hope it works, probably will not work idea. I'm attaching a couple drawer slides to this TV tray table. My thinking is that I'll be able to still have enough weight behind it that will not tip over, but make it really, really easy for us to get to our seat after loading it up with all our grub. The goal is that we'll be able to slide it out, leaving plenty of room to get behind it, sit down, then simply slide it back to us. After clamping on some guides to make it easier to line up the slides, I screw them on vertically. I use some double-sided tape to temporarily stick on the board that the tray will be attached to, screw it all together, and reassemble the sliding portion. Mounting them vertically like this, I should have no issues with strength as these slides are rated for 100 pounds. To attach the back braces to the upright, I use a healthy amount of glue. I make sure that each hole gets plenty of glue as I want this to be strong. This became a very stressful glue up. My dowel holes lined up perfectly, but the dowels were just an incredibly tight fit. Even after I baked them in my oven for 10 minutes to try to remove as much moisture as possible so they would shrink. I was simply not gonna be able to simply press these together by hand, so I had to pull out the clamps not just to clamp them tight, but to simply get them together. This happened with each of my dowel joints and was quite stressful. Any tips? I would love to hear them in the comments below. And now it's basically rinse and repeat to attach the upright to the base. I ran into the same problem with the dowels being just too tight, requiring me to use clamps to bring everything together. Seriously. I was barely able to just start these two pieces to come together by hand. For a bit of added strength, I decided to drill a couple two inch holes up through the bottom and into the back supports. I followed that up by inserting a couple of two inch dowels all the way through. I did this on both sides. I'm hoping it'll even add a bunch more strength. I want to use a bit longer screws to really give the hinge more holding power so I glue a small half inch piece of plywood to my sliding board where the hinges will be placed. Pro tip for you all, so that you have a chance to practice cleaning glue off a board, spread the glue over far more area than you'll be using. Now to attach the hinge to the upright and then to the tabletop. I purchased these locking shelf hinges. I don't remember what they were rated for, but it was far more than we would ever put on the tabletop. I use a combination square to make sure that I get them attached squarely and evenly to the upright. Attaching to the tabletop, I use a weight to hold things in place while I pre-drill and attach with screws. Notice how I have it offset and not centered on the tabletop. This is what's going to give me some counterweight when extending the drawer and keeping it from tipping over. Also, I know that all this plywood at the hinge is not the most attractive, 
But remember, this is just a prototype to see if it's gonna work. If it does, I'll come back and place some nice edging on it and make it look better. As well as I'm just gonna build a completely new one with better wood and not scraps of all types of wood. Okay, here it is. And I'm gonna have to call this one a failure. I tried it, I hadn't seen it done before, and I think there's a reason why it hasn't been done. As far as the mechanisms, everything works exactly how I wanted it to work. It just doesn't perform like I need it to. It's really nice that you can open this up. That works great. Lowers it nice and easy. Everything there is great. It's not the most attractive thing because I'm using about four different kinds of wood in here. But when you open it up, and the key part that I wanted to do was have this be able to extend out so that you could have your food on here, come into your seat, and then just drag this up to you. The problem is I didn't take something into consideration, and that's I'm not in space, and there's gravity. So when I let go, it's going to tip. So there's a couple of things that I could have done different. One, maybe I couldn't have used full extension sliders and only had it come up like that. And that actually works pretty good because I can, I can put a lot of weight until I go way out to the edges out here is when it tips. So I think that actually could work pretty good. Um, the other that I thought I was gonna be able to get away with this was if you can see, I have it set back, the table set back some. So that way I was hoping it was going to offset the weight. It just didn't work. The other thing that I don't like is I don't like the way it looks with all of this wood up here, especially since it's just plywood. Again, if I was to do this again, I'd probably use better wood, but this was more of a proof of concept just to see if it would work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna remove the entire drawer slide portion completely and just hook these brackets in the tabletop right to this, and that way it'll just fold down. We can still slide it out of the way. It'll work great as a TV tray, just not exactly how, as I want, uh, how I wanted it to work. So let's get going on the fix. After getting over the shame I brought onto me and my family, the first thing I'll need to do is take this apart, which is easy enough by simply removing a few screws. Next, I'll need to sand down the upright a bit, fill the screw holes with putty, sand again, and then refinish. Now the only thing left to do is to reattach the locking shelf hinge to the upright and the tabletop. Easy peasy since I've already done it once before and only need a few screws and a combination square to make sure that I have it squarely attached. Well, here it is. Like I said, it is not exactly like I originally intended, but I still think my original idea can be done with a little bit more thought. As it is, I think this will work fine. It's easy to lift, locks into place, gives us a nice eating surface. It's also very easy to put back down. So I think overall, I think I'm gonna go ahead and call this one a failure, but with a very, very successful fix. I like it. Are you guys still here? Why are you still here? Go build something. But first, before you leave, do me a favor. Like and subscribe if you want. Leave a comment on what you think. And if you really, really want to help me out, share the video for others. And if you really want to be my bestie, then go ahead and check out the links that I put in the comments below to all my affiliate links. These are products that I use or really dream about, things that I really want. If you want to see a grown man cry uncontrollably, then go ahead and click the dislike button. That'll do it. Now it's really over. So go ahead, check out some of these other links that I've got posted up here I think you'll like. And until next time, see ya.